we are excited to have everyone join us as we go through the over 70 checklists that we have to offer in the uh, ultimate book of HR checklists today. This is a step-by-step -step, uh, instruction manual, essentially that you can look at it as, uh, that helps small business owners, nonprofit leaders, uh, entrepreneurs, office managers, HR professionals, everyone have the confidence to be able to make the right decisions when it comes to these employee management decisions. We know that there are a lot of things that can come from these situations and sometimes they can be costly mistakes. Uh, each week on the HR Stories podcast, we do take the opportunity to have the team share some stories of how these nonprofits, corporate uh, teams, uh, different companies have handled different employee management decisions, maybe in not such a good way. And they have had situations where these have cost them their reputation or up to millions of dollars. Uh, so the team goes through these stories each week. Uh, and we have been wondering and talking as a team, how do we come up with a powerful yet simple resource for individuals with HR responsibilities so that we can make sure that the right decisions are happening when it comes to employee management? I would like to introduce the two people that came to the table with an answer for that. We have Chuck Smickin and John Tallheimer. Uh, Chuck is a seasoned certified HR professional. He's got over 25 years of experience in human resources and consulting for small businesses. John Tallheimer is an award-winning management consultant who has helped hundreds of businesses and professionals uh, transform their potential into extraordinary performance. <laughs> Together, they host a highly acclaimed HR Stories podcast. Uh, where the lesson is in every story. Welcome, guys. Thanks, Samantha. Uh, folks, I am uh, Chuck, Chuck Samikian. And I'm John Tallheimer. Welcome. Glad you guys were here today. We are really excited to have everyone here. As you guys are sitting through the webinar here, uh, don't forget to check out the QA section of that chat. Uh, you can also reach out to us individually in the chat if you'd like, but that QA section will be a really great way for me to be able to keep an eye out on any questions that you may have about this as we go through it today. Um, and we also uh, will be taking the opportunity to answer those questions as we go throughout or at the end, uh, as long as time provides. And uh, everyone here today, big important part of this, will be getting a recording of the webinar and a chance to purchase the resource guide at a 45% discount. So don't miss out on that. There is a code that you will need for it, and I'll be putting some information in the chat about it, but the code is HR Stories, all one word. Um, so we are going to pass it over to Chuck and John. All right, thank you, Samantha. Awesome introduction. You know, and let's face it, you know, managing HR and human resources is complicated. You know, over the years, our clients have struggled getting it right. And according to ADP over the past few years, there's been a 400% 400 uh, increase in employment lawsuits. Uh, I'm sure you would agree that HR can be hard. But does it have to be, right? So working with small business owners and nonprofits, uh, I keep wondering if there was a way to make employee management side of the business simple enough so that my clients had the competitive advantage, yet powerful enough to keep them out of trouble. Yeah, you know, it's been frustrating for HR professionals for a long time. Yeah. And don't forget the managers and leaders of organizations as well. Yeah. Hey, John, do you remember when we first started looking at this problem? I do. I wanted to write a book and you told me no one would read it. Oh, it hurt. Um, but listen, right? How many times have you purchased a business book or a reference guide and either never opened it or first read the first few pages and never got back to it? Yeah. Uh, boring. <laughs> boring, really, truly. Uh, that was the one thing I was adamant about. I wanted our resource guide to uh, be something that that people would use. Yeah, all right. We, I agree. I, and I, end up in the long run, ended up agreeing with you. But we wanted to create a tool for small business owners, entrepreneurs, nonprofit leaders, off HR professionals who just don't have time to read a book. Yeah, you know, even as an HR director, when I was in those corporate HR days before being a consultant, you know, I needed answers. And sometimes I needed instant and quick answers. And there wasn't a lot of time to like surf the web and sort through that clutter. And those of us that have been in HR, small business, when we look for HR answers on the web and we try and Google it, what do we find? We find a lot of clutter. And so I certainly didn't want to run up charges from the employment attorney and eventually I might need to call that attorney, but I thought, geez, if I could get a base of knowledge, a base of understanding, I would at least save some time 
some money, and of course, build confidence in my stakeholders, you know, my boss and the others that I supported that depended on me. So I certainly understand from personal experience that they, uh, HR, uh, anyone that with HR responsibilities need something that they can open up and use right away. And, and honestly, when we had this conversation, I didn't think we were going to find a solution. I just didn't know if there was a solution out there that we could present, that we could actually build uh, until you reminded me of the Checklist Manifesto by Atul Gwande and how he talks about using checklists to solve complex problems. Yeah, that, that's a great book, folks. The Checklist Manifesto. I'm not a big business book reader, but if you uh, listen to it uh, on audiobook, it's fantastic. And I got to say, after reading that book, uh, and I kept thinking about HR, and I thought, what could be more complex than managing employees and, of course, the HR side of things? Because you can make mistakes. You cannot remember everything. Yeah, Chuck, you know, over the last five years, I've had my own management consulting. I've been really focused on the people side of work. And I've been trying to figure out why some employees are successful and some are not. And what I've finally done, I finally reached this conclusion, and you and I have talked about this many times, it's about the ability to make the right behavioral decisions in the moment, right? Let me say that again. It's the ability to consistently make the right behavioral decisions in the moment. And there are five different factors that influence our ability to make those decisions. Knowledge, ability, guidance, energy, and systems. The hidden power lies in the ability to have our employees make those consistent decisions. To do this well, we need to have the right systems in place. For most people, using a simple checklist can help them avoid those mistakes. Yeah, right there. The hidden power that we're going through today are use of checklists because mistakes can be costly. You know, every week on our podcast, hey, shameless plug, the <laughs> HR Stories podcast. Where there is a lesson in every story. That's right. HRStoriesPodcast.com. We talk about organizations that, that made a mistake uh, and it ends up costing them thousands, sometimes millions of dollars and their reputation. They end up as front page headlines on the Department of Labor News, the EEOC News, or even the nightly news. And most of these uh, mistakes uh, or situations could have been fixed if they had a process or a system in place. Yeah, I totally agree with that, Chuck. And I, I kind of listen to those stories again as I, as I go back and listen to them in the past. I just go, oh, if they had just done this one thing, the one story that stands out to me and so much that I've used, we used it in the forward of our book is that I got a call from one of my friends. She was an HR director at a company and I think like maybe 75, 150 employees, somewhere in there. And she said, John, you're never going to guess what happened to me. And I said, uh-oh, what happened? She goes, well, I came into work this morning and the CEO was standing in her office which is just never a good sign, right? If you're sitting in your office and you walk in and there's the CEO, never a good thing. So I'm like, what happened? She goes, well, the night before, one of our HR managers had to terminate an employee. Now, this was something they had done before. They'd done it as a team. Each HR managers had a chance to do this. And so it wasn't something out of the ordinary. And so I asked, so what happened? She goes, well, the HR manager forgot to let IT know that the employee had been terminated. And so somehow the employee's at home at night and figures this out <laughs> and decides to send this scathing email to everybody um, in the company, including the CEO, telling them how bad the CEO, how, how bad the company was, how terrible things were, all this kind of stuff. And so as we were having this conversation, Chuck and I were kind of in the process of putting the checklist together. And I said, do you have a termination checklist? And she said, no. And I was like, oh, that would have saved it, right? That would have been able to help it. Now, in a lot of those cases, when I tell this story, people go, oh, that HR manager should be fired. They're not there. And it's not, not the HR manager's fault, right? Because there was no system in place to allow that HR manager to do their job, right? So it was the end of the day, the HR manager was tired and worn out. It had been a long week and wanted to get home to their family. 
we are all fallible, right? We all make mistakes. Yeah, there's that word fallible. You know, we both used it. Uh, it's a nature of human fallibility that that we can and fail to do uh, sometimes what we set out in the world to do. But think of it this way. There may be a number of reasons why we fail. And some of these reasons we can't control. Some things uh, as uh, HR, as small business owners, whatever we're doing, things just come out of left field. Uh, things we just can't control maybe, but but the crux of why we wrote this book is there are things we can control. And in those instances, the knowledge exists, yet we may fail to apply it correctly. And your story is a great example of that. The knowledge ex existed, but for some reason, it was not applied. Why was it applied? I don't know. You know? But uh, what I see when it comes to organizations trying to get HR right is trying to remember those complex and complicated steps, but not only those, but the simple administrative clerical mistakes and errors in applying the law. And sometimes, yes, once again, there are things we can't control, but we can still have processes in place to prepare and minimize the impact. And that's why we have both used checklists for pretty much most of our careers. But yeah. John, enough about uh, why checklists are great. Let's talk about our checklists. And yeah, the I mean, audience, I'm sure, would love to see uh, how our checklists or checklists overall can help reduce mistakes in their organization. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a great example, right? And so in our resource guide, The Ultimate Book of HR Checklists, we've unlocked the power of checklists to improve employment management practices for small businesses, government agency, nonprofits. Each page is packed with valuable information to help those who have human resources responsibility have that confidence to make that right decision. And it's going back just for a second, Chuck, going back to that story, I don't think it was the HR manager that failed. It's just, it would have been very easy if they had that checklist to be grounded in to go, yeah, oh, I did everything I need to do. Now I can go home where they were doing it mentally. And as you said, we're fallible. We forget, we get tired, we get worn out. Um, so I think, right. And so I think that's really the challenge there as well. Yeah. So Samantha, can you open up the resource guide so our viewers can see it? And, you know, while you're doing that, uh, let me brag on the team at Cronin uh, Creative for their work on the design of the ultimate uh, resource guide. You know, they did an amazing job of understanding what we wanted and translating it to the page. Uh, one of the most important aspects of this resource guide was to make it interactive. Uh, and you will see as we demonstrate how you can use the checklist. And I also wanna do a shout out for a lot of our early readers. We had small business owners, we had HR professionals, we had um, uh, just a whole slew of people early on read, give us feedback, and the feedback has been phenomenal. But John, I wanna clarify something for our audience, because <laughs> you know this is a book. I use the term book. We use the term resource, uh, but it's more than a book. It's truly a one-stop resource, which is why we use that word to describe the ultimate book of checklists. Yeah, and we've argued about this numerous times, right? <laughs> uh, it's a tool, right? It's a tool to unlock the hidden power of checklists for your organization. That's going to help us do that really well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So uh, here you see our beautiful front page. And, and I want to give you a tour of our table of contents. And as Samantha mentioned, there's over 70 checklists to kind of handle the most common employee management and, and HR decisions, things to help uh, build in a process, kind of that, 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 those hidden secrets that we're going to just reveal to you in just a few checklists that can be the difference between being on the front page of, of the late, uh, late night news. So as you can see, as we go, Samantha, if you go to page uh, seven, so you can see we've divided the book into eight chapters here. And um, the first chapter is called Human Resource Foundational Documents. Second chapter is Hiring Employees. And as she slowly scrolls through, you can see all the different checklists on there. There's uh, number three is rewarding employees, which is uh, pay and benefits. Chapter four, creating the best work environment. Chapter five is managing remote employees. 
Uh, John and I, that was one of the first classes we ever taught uh, together was how to uh, managing a remote workforce. So we've taken a lot of the things we developed in that class and put them in that chapter. We're actually uh, specifically very excited about that one. Uh, number six is improving employee performance. Chapter seven, we talk about keeping organization and keeping the organization safe. And as I teach in all of my HR classes for HR folks uh, and even managers, your number one job is to keep the organization safe. Uh, and then of course, number eight, reducing organizational risk, self audits. And one of the uh, my favorite things to do, and Samantha, if you uh, go to the appendixes, especially Appendix B, there are two alternative checklist groupings in the back of the book. Uh, one is an alphabetical list. The other one grouping is pretty cool. We call it the series grouping. And one thing that I want to share with you is each title, whether it's in the table of contents, the alphabetical list, or the alternative series list, uh, it's hyperlinked to the actual checklist. So Samantha, why don't you go to the first uh, checklist that we have? It's employment laws by the number of employees. That's page 11. Yeah, and I just want to throw in there, Chuck, I think one of the things that you did really well when you designed those checklists uh, is that you put it in places where it made sense for an HR professional or a manager looking for, hey, I want to go and look at this particular section or this way. And so we've grouped them together so people can go there. And I think it's always a good thing to do that. Yeah, yeah. I I, I put myself, because I've been there and, and I know you've been there too. And I kept thinking, right. What, how could, how would I want to see it? So hopefully everyone's like me or, or close to, you know, that, but there's a couple of alternative uh, ways to find the checklist that you need. So going back to that first checklist, employment laws by the number of employees. Now, what you're going to see, uh, folks, is each checklist has four sections, definitely four sections. Uh, the first one is the purpose of the checklist, because we didn't want to just throw up a checklist and say, here it is, use it. We really wanted to give an in-depth, because not everyone uh, that's reading this is an HR professional. You've got people with new HR responsibilities. You've got small business owners. You've got um, leaders of nonprofits. So this covers every gamut. So what's the purpose? Why are we doing this checklist? Um, and then there's the actual checklist. You'll see as Samantha scrolls down there. Uh, and then, it, and we're going to come back to this, folks, in a minute, but scroll on down, Samantha. We actually put a section in there called legal concerns and resources. We looked at each checklist. We thought, okay, what would be the legal concerns uh, with that particular subject that our readers just need to be aware of? And there's so many uh, that, that we can't list everything, but we thought we'd give those resources. And specifically with this checklist, uh, well, John, I, I know you, your idea was to make sure that people uh, uh, had the information because it's not just federal law, but there's a lot of state and local laws too. Yeah, I mean, I, I, again, when we're looking at the checklist, we were trying to think, so it's very, it, it was very simple, not very simple, right? It was complex, it kind of took us a while to figure out what the checklist were gonna be like, but then we were looking at the checklist and we're like, all right, could somebody open our book, open the resource guide and just start working with the checklist? And so we built them designed for not only that HR professional has been in HR for years, but also for that first time manager or business owner that has to deal with something. So we wanted to give a, con a context to the checklist itself, right? And so that was the reason for the purpose. That was the reason for the definitions. That was the reason for the legal concern. And that was the reason really for the resources because there are times when you go and look at that checklist, you're gonna be like, all right, I got it. And then there's gonna be other times, wait, I need more information. And so we added resources that you can click on, right? Completely interactive. Oh, I need to go to the Department of Labor. I can go look up that perspective in here or kind of dive into that as well. So sure. that's great. So, yeah. so uh, and, and this is something you came up with, John. I was like, oh boy, we gotta do this you know, for every checklist. But Samantha, go to page 14. I just wanna show uh, the definitions. So we do, uh, most of our checklists have uh, definitions. You can see in this checklist, best practices for employee handbooks we have uh, several definitions. And that was something that took a, a bit 
coming up with, but that was uh, that was your idea. So I I loved it. It works out well. Um, Samantha, let's go back to page 12, employment laws by the numbers. Yeah, I think we now, debated a little bit about what words we should define, what words shouldn't we define. Yeah. Um, and you know, in our, our experience, and I think this is where you came from, Chuck, you were like, everyone knows what that means. And I was trying to be like, well, I'll, I don't know if everyone does. And so let's put some words in there to help that new HR person, that new manager kind of get that in there. Yeah, FLSA, right? you know, Fair Labor Standards Act. You know, okay, I'll explain what that means. So, <laughs> all right. So going back to employment laws by the numbers, uh, this is an important checklist, folks. And I want you to pay attention uh, because as organizations grow, as you grow, there are different laws that come into play. And if you're not aware, sometimes these laws can sneak up and surprise you, uh, and you could be breaking them. So awareness is a big factor when getting HR right. You know, let's look at one employee here. All of the laws that you need to be aware of uh, with just a few, it, with just one employee, and a lot of companies don't realize that, but within 14 more employees to get to 15, you have EEOC, let's define that, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission laws, <laughs> right? And you have ADA, not the American Dental Association, but ADA, <laughs> the Americans with Disabilities Act laws to adhere to. Small businesses that are growing uh, quickly could miss these laws. Larger businesses, you need to go back to this checklist and do a self audit. It is a great audit tool. So as you go through each item, and Samantha, why don't you show them how you simply click the box and bam, you have your instant checklist. You can print this out, you can print just this section out, uh, or you can keep it as an interactive PDF and uh, you can, you can uh, click it off and, and save it. And while we're here, I just wanna to briefly touch um, at, at uh, the different levels that come into play at 20, then 50, then 100. So every level has a, a, an impact on the laws. And so I, I really, really love this checklist. John, what checklist do you wanna show them? You know, uh, Samantha, if you can go to page 42, that would be great. Uh, the one thing I would say about that other checklist, Chuck, and I think you mentioned it, it's really great for auditing, right? Yeah. Am I doing this law? Do I have a policy about it, right? So we can use it as an audit thing uh, as, as well, right? And so even if maybe you've been doing this for a while, you've been doing HR, you've been running your business for a while, it's a good thing just to go back and go, all right, we're doing that. What is the policy? Are we doing those things correctly? And a lot of that, those laws have checklists later on in the book that you can refer to. Um, so I wanted to talk about one of the things that we are all struggling with. I was meeting with a nonprofit on Monday doing a strategic planning session. And one of the things they said is they're having troubles with their workforce and getting enough people to do what needs to be done. They want to expand. They want to get a bigger, not have a bigger footprint in the, I'm in Tennessee, in the Tennessee area, but they can't do that if the workforce isn't going to allow them. And so one of the checklists that we did um, is um, the hiring checklist, right? The hiring employee. Hey, Samantha, scroll down to page 46. Um, and as she's doing this, she's going to do this a little, not too fast, but she's going to do it, right? And so we're going to go through, sorry, Samantha. Um, and so one of the checklists we have in there, and I'm not going to go through it today, but is the remote hiring checklist. Remote hiring is different than hiring locally. And so what are you going to do? How are you going to make sure that you're getting those people right? Um, and what we're finding is more and more companies are doing the hiring process online, hiring people on remotely uh, in a virtual world, and then having them come to the company. Um, and so how do you do that? How do you make sure you're getting the right people becomes really important. We want to make sure that we address that. But on page 46, it begins our hiring process check checklist. Right, and it's our guide to improving your hiring process strategy and ensuring you don't miss any of the essential steps. Right, because if we miss an essential step, it could cause us not to be able to hire that person right away. It could cause us to follow in, follow under the EEOC discrimination laws, uh, or maybe the Department of Labor, or maybe even the IRS. Right, so you want to do that. Right, so the checklist has definitions of HR speak, as we were saying earlier. Uh, Chuck and I had lots of conversation. Is that our HR speak or is that common knowledge in the business world? And so we've kind of tried to fall um, onto the side of, well, 
if maybe we think somebody might not know it, let's add it in there. So you can see there's definitions in there. All right, so Samantha, let's go to page 47. Um, so the hiring process has been broken down into different stages, including the prep work, right? And so the prep work really, when you're hiring somebody, starts with the job description checklist. And so my advice to you is when you get the book and you're going to do a job posting, go to the job description, make sure you're completing the job description checklist first, and then you're going to advertise the opening. And I, in my classes and all my workshops, and when we're talking about job postings, we really do this little um, exercise where I have people write a job posting right there on the spot. And it's interesting because a lot of people will say, oh, my job posting, I'm going to tell people I have great benefits and great pay. Sure, important, but really that job posting is a mini marketing for your company, right? It's the mini marketing brand. It's a marketing segment for your company that you're going to get out there. Right. And it really should answer this question. Why should that candidate work for you? Why should that candidate work for you? Um, it's no longer enough to have good pay and benefits. We know that, right? We have good pay and benefits and we're still not finding enough people. People are looking for flexibility and they're looking for purposes when they're hiring their job. They want to work for a company they're going to feel good about that has the flexibility they need. Right? And so then the next step is the reviewing the resume and applications to see if the right experience compared to the job description. Again, job description plays a role, role out there. And then on page 48, we break the interview process down into several steps. Getting interviews right so that you're not unintentionally discriminating during the process and that, and that you're finding the best candidates. Right, And doing that as well, we hear a lot of times uh, through HR Stories podcast, we find a lot of times companies are not hiring people the right way and they're accidentally or unintentionally discriminating against people because they're not processing it the right way. They're not doing it and they're allowing individuals in the interview process um, to be discriminatory or ask dis discriminatory questions as well. And so I've been talking to, Chuck and I travel the country and we talk to HR directors, HR managers and recruiters. And they all agree when it comes to the interview process, you should be asking behavior, behavioral and situational questions. These questions are those questions that start with, tell me a time, give me an example, describe to me, right? We should be asking those questions on there to make sure they are fit for your organization. That's the fourth item on the checklist, right? You can see it on page 48, it's right there. Now. As we go to page 49, uh, you can see we finished making sure that you have the proper instructions to hire the candidate, including things like, um, are you going to do background checks? Are you going to do drug tests? How are you going to do those and make sure that you have that in there as well? Hey, Samantha, is it possible you could scroll down to page 52? I just want to show them. And I, I got to say, I am so excited that these things are included in the checklist. We put in there um two questions right we put in that we put in two lists one was the list was the top 30 questions to avoid and what are the top 30 questions you should ask and this will allow you and give you some ideas of what questions you should ask which questions you need to avoid um i was saying to my class yesterday i was doing a workshop yesterday with people that were new to hr and i said to them that one of the worst questions you can ask is tell me a little bit about yourself right we all use it but you may hear them say, oh, I'm a single dad. I have two kids. I live in this neighborhood. And if you decide not to hire that person for those reasons, that could be considered discriminatory. Um, and so being very careful, not only what you're going to ask, but maybe the hiring manager, maybe the staff that's going to interview that person. Do they know what to ask? Now, you can just print the list out and give it to that hiring manager, give it to that staff member, and now they have that on there as well. Um, so Chuck, where do you want to go next? Sure. I actually do have a question real quick. Oh, we can take um, a moment. Sure. Uh, don't forget everyone to use that Q&A section if you do have any uh, questions for us, just to make sure it doesn't get missed. But we have a question from Julie, who's uh, kind of joining us from New Mexico here. How would I use the resources in the book? Yeah, that's a great question, right? And so as you'll see that in every checklist, we do have a group of resources that you can do. And what we did is basically, we, as we are doing our research um, for our checklist, when we were like, what we would do, here's how my process, and I think Chuck's process was very similar. 
we would be assigned a checklist. And so we would pull up and I say, oh, I already do that checklist. I've shown that to managers and uh, HR professionals already have that checklist. So we would pull that checklist up and then we would go, all right, where are the resources? What, where am I getting this information from, right? What's that reasonable basis we like to say in HR? And so I pulled that up and I'm like, hey, why don't we just drop this in as resources as well? So you can then go, oh, here's an article about the, the questions about hiring questions. Here's, a, here's an article or here's a, from the Department of Labor. Here's what they say about that. Or here's the information from the EEOC. Um, so it's really a lot of great information in there for you as a new Julie, as a new HR person, or maybe a new manager or somebody that's been managing for a while, it's going to give you more depth around the checklist and really kind of help guide you in there. And a couple of our early readers really came to me and said, John, I love the resources. There's times that I go through the checklist and I'm not exactly sure. And so I dive into the resources and pretty much every single question has been answered for me. So that's great. All right, Chuck, I think we should kind of continue. Unless sure. 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 So John, when we talk about, obviously we're launching our book today, folks, but we're also talking about the hidden power behind successful businesses, to have processes in place, to avoid making mistakes is, is great, but sometimes things happen that you don't expect. And the key to success is being prepared, knowing what to do when things happen. That is so important. Yeah, right. And so what are you talking about, Chuck? I mean, we're perfect, right? Everything goes yeah. well, right? Uh, yeah. God, tell well, us uh, Samantha, go to page 141. And those of my, uh, and I see some names here, some names I definitely know, some uh, HR folks, people I've worked with in the past. Some people love doing investigations, John, and some people don't. And I'm talking about investigations. Anyone that has that top HR responsibility, any small business without any HR support will at some point need to conduct a workplace investigation for any variety of reasons. And the way you conduct that investigation could play a huge factor down the line. Say, for example, it ends up in court. Uh, like I said earlier, you can't remember everything uh, and you want to be consistent. And at times, emotions can be running hot. So we created a workplace investigation checklist uh, that I have personally used uh, over the years, and it is to help keep organized and you follow a step-by-step -step approach. So just some quick basics. I know I, I don't I know we don't have a lot of time, but Samantha, go to page 142. So when you do just an overall workplace investigation, there are five areas you need to consider. And in those five areas, uh, number one, you have to define the, the scope of the investigation. Have a plan. Don't just, you know, run right out and, and I'm going to investigate. You really need to define some of these things. What's being investigated? Why are they being investigated? Then, uh, number two, notify the employee under investigation. Uh, there are several ways to do that. There are several strategies with that, but uh, we have those listed here. Uh, number three, you, you need to select an investigator. Maybe it's you. Maybe it's someone else, a third party neutral, but that's, that is extremely important as well as understand the interview dynamics when it comes to an investigation. And then finally, you have to wrap things up. Uh, a lot of times people forget about number five, that wrapping things up, um, what is it? Uh, documenting everything and making sure everyone is on the same page. That is uh that's a big one when it comes down to, I call it a message in the bottle, John, so that we may not be around one month, one year, 10 years from now, but if that ever has to come up, someone could just open up that message in the bottle and see all the documentation of what occurred. Yeah, and I know I know you do this, right? You've done this as a consultant a lot of times, come in and done that investigation, and this checklist is built on your experiences on there. Uh, but I know you and I had that conversation. It is a lot to remember, right? And so being able to go back to and not going, oh, I remember. I think a lot of times we as humans go, oh, I remember the process. And we sometimes we forget, right? We forget and then we forget an important step. And so again, the checklist grounds us 
in this case, an investigation, it grounds us, oh, I got to remember to do that. Oh, I got to think about that, right? And so again, it gets us in there. So we're not spending our energy and our mind muscle on trying to remember everything. We have a checklist to go back. And so now we can spend our mind muscle on actual the actual investigation. So really yeah. good. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 look, I know we need to wrap up here, but I just just indulge me just a minute here. Right. Uh, just a minute. I want to share <laughs> that having that plan is key. And I know uh, there's a lot of people on this uh, call today and in this webinar, but having an employee come in and sit and you're sitting thinking, oh man, I have to do an investigation. It doesn't happen that often. Having that plan is key to a successful investigation. And there is a specific type of investigation, like a sexual harassment investigation, that the EEOC, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, is going to want to see exactly what steps you took to handle the complaint. And you cannot miss a beat here. And that is why we went one step further, and we created a special section on investigating a harassment complaint. So folks, I know we're running out. I just want to share, pay, Samantha, go to page 133. You know, from my experience, I'm going to tell you, it is not easy going through this process. I've done it as an HR director. I've done it as a consultant, third-party neutral going in and doing these things. But over the years, I've used these exact steps, this exact step-by-step -step formula to stay on track and make sure I don't miss anything. And I'm really excited to share that knowledge uh, here with you today. Um, I, you know, I, it's great. And I, you know, one of the things and I, I hear it, um, Chuck, do you remember Becky Becker? Um, and she, so she was a facilitator that we worked with and she would always say that we are responsible being able to show how we got our answers. Right. So mm -hmm. think back to that seventh grade math problem, right? Your teacher would be like, that's great. You got the right answer, but I need you to show you, show me how you got to that answer. The same is for the EEOC investigations. The same is for making sure that when we're doing our work, we're documenting, documenting, documenting. Again, documentation and consistency are two most important things when it comes to employment management practices, getting those right. Yep, yep, yep. So um, that's all I got, John. Okay, well, that's great. Yeah, and th thank you for doing that, Chuck. I think there was a great checklist, great couple checklists to kind of go over. So I think you're starting to understand what the power of checklists are and how they can be used to benefit us and our small businesses and government agencies and nonprofits. It really has been an amazing journey that Chuck and I have been on. And we feel really strongly that this final product is very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the one thing I really like about this is with little or no HR experience, uh, you can go in use this resource, these checklists, and immediately put systems in place right away to reduce costly mistakes. Yeah, I think so too. Hey, uh, Samantha, I know you've been answering some questions in the Q&A in the chat box. Are any questions outstanding that we kind of want to address? The system keeps muting me, sorry. Um, so <laughs> we, uh, we do have one more that I just wanted to touch on. We had Mark bring up uh, a question about whether or not the book was editable um, and exportable. You had mentioned that you can export and kind of use the check boxes, but I wanted to bring up and kind of let you guys elaborate on how using this as a base point and then being able to customize it for your, you know, or being able to use it as a, a reference for your individual company, how, how someone can do that. Sure. So um, it, it when you uh, purchase this, or you're, you're, you'll have an option of two uh, downloads. One is in an EPUB format, which is kind of like a Kindle ebook. That is not editable, but you can have it as an easy reference on your phone, on your on any reader, a Kindle that you might have, that sort of thing. The second option is a PDF. So when you download it, it will be a PDF. The, the check boxes are um, editable, so you can uh, interact with them, but it is a PDF. But if you have a PDF uh, writer or the ability to edit uh, PDFs, a PDF program, you can, uh, because it is a PDF, you can easily adjust some things to fit your specific company. Yeah, and it is a good base. We understand like not every situation may be exactly the same, right? It's hard to create a checklist for every type of industry and that kind of stuff. 
Uh, and you may want to add, oh, we need to do this in our industry. We understand that. But um, what I think it really does is set that great pattern of, oh, I'm going to use checklists. I'm going to have that habit. I'm going to routinely check the book. One of the early readers, and I forgot who it was, but she was like, I use this every day. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at it every day as a reminder. And this is somebody that's been in HR, for, I think it was 20 years. Um, I'm using it as a reminder to not only myself, but my staff as well. I think she was an HR director. Chuck, you can qualify that. Yep. Yep. She was. She was an HR person. And just recently, we had uh, someone from California uh, that's actually a secretary in a SHRM chapter out there. She sent us a glowing email saying, I uh, LOV love the book. But, you know, there are ways like I, I use something called PDF Chef, by the way, to, to edit PDF documents are very inexpensive, and I found it to be very, very uh, um, useful. But yes, people so far have loved the book in its current format, and um, you know. Yeah, and I, I think it's just great to to think about it as like the root of what you should reference. You know, like that that base point to make sure you have everything, and then if you need to think about specifics to your organization outside of that, that's where that can come in. Any other questions, Samantha? It looks like we are all good right now, guys. Yeah. So folks, thank you for listening. And because you're here today, uh, we're going to give you 45% off. The list price of this is $179, uh, but you do get to use the discount HR Stories, H-R-S-T-O-R-I-E-S. -S. Uh, in the checkout, you'll get 45%. If you go to hrchecklists.com, that's hrchecklists with an S. Sometimes I need to emphasize that. Uh, and you can purchase the book there. And you can actually read a lot more about what the book entails. And when you go to purchase it, you can download even a sample copy and see a little bit more inside the book. Yeah, that's great. And I know, Samantha, you've been putting in information and you've put in the website so they can directly link on to that. We will also make sure that you get that in an email as well after the class. You can have it there as well. Um, so, right, we call it we call it a book. We call it a reference guide. I know, right? We've been going back and forth. Well, our, our early readers loved it, um, and they saw the power behind it right away. Um, I work, was working with a nonprofit, and there was somebody that was a small nonprofit. I think they had like 150 employees. But they didn't have an HR person, and this person was the associate director and been given that responsibility. And so when we had the first early draft, I gave it to her. And I'm like, here, this may help you. And she came back going, oh, this has saved me so many times when I'm dealing with this kind of issue, right? And so it was really helpful to kind of get that across there. All right, Chuck, any final thoughts? No, folks, um, hopefully you got some good information. Like I said, go to hrchecklist.com, click on buy the book. And in that section, there's an option to see more pages and actually download a uh, PDF sample so you can play around and, and have a little fun. As fun as HR can be, right, John? Yeah. Uh, so if you're interested in having Chuck or I work with your team to learn more about human resources process or employment management best practices, please don't read hesitate to reach out to us and let us know. Um, you can, when we respond to you, you can send us an email. We'll give you the email address in there. Um, and, and my really final thought is this, just getting HR right, getting employment practices right is critical. Our book is a tool to give you the confidence and other people the confidence to make that right decision. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks everyone. Goodbye. Thank you everyone. Uh, this is brought to you by the team of HR Stories today. Uh, make sure that you connect with us at HR Stories Podcast. Listen to us each week. Or go ahead and check out the HR team of One Community on Facebook. It's a really great resource for everyone. There's a lot of good discussion happening there, so don't miss out on that. And like Chuck and John were talking about, don't forget to purchase and use that code. That code does expire. Uh, that is going to be January 31st, so it does expire. So don't miss out on the opportunity to save 45%. Thank you so much for listening today. Have a wonderful rest of your week.